it's a tr British tradition. We began years ago with the ship, you know, the Riddle of the Sands and um, the Lady in White and so on. We began that genre. Um, everybody else has copied us one way or another. Um, and I think that but the, because in the Cold War it was a subject of daily interest. Your papers were full of Russia doing this, Russia doing that, the East, East Bloc doing this, the Iron Curtain doing this and so on. So people were interested. Um, they're less interested now because they don't perceive the, th the threat. Back then the threat was very perceivable. I mean, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, you have to go back two generations. Um, so, there are, I mean, 60% of the British population were not alive during the Cuban Missile Crisis or the assassination of Kennedy a year later. And, but then it was visible to all of us. Uh, the, we, we had clear enemies uh, in the form of the Soviet Union and, uh, and its arm, the KGB. And so it was uh, very present to us. Now it's more remote, and therefore I think the interest is less. How accurately is espionage, or was espionage, re reflected in fiction? Well, I mean, before, I think before Le Carre, he was the pioneer. Before Le Carre, probably not very accurately. Eric Ambler did a bit, you know, but it was, it was um, all spies were gentlemen, and Ashenden, and they were Somerset Maugham, and, uh, and he... Uh, if you like, broke the mold by bringing in Alex Limas um, um, and, and dropped it to the street. Uh, the, Limas was, was who? Was it, well, he was in The Spy Who in the Cold, um, which, which was, was John Le Carre's. It ability. was his third book, but it was his big breakthrough, um, and I think a very high fine spy novel. Um, and he, it, he sort of didn't portray it in any way as glamorous or um, bondish with you know uh, men going around pulling out Walter PPK pistols and shooting agents, shooting rival agents or anything like that. Um, he he betrayed it, portrayed it rather as it was, which was very secret, very hidden, somewhat grubby, um, about deception and betrayal, um, uh, and basically about, about I, mean, I mean, this is story behind the spying of the goal was the, the destruction of a very dangerous rival um, uh, the, uh, in, inside the, the East German secret police um, and to destroy him by discrediting him in the eyes of his superiors. So a very um, sort of tortuous novel. Um, but it, it, set the, it set the mold for all the Len Daytons and, um, and the others. Um, I came along later, but I didn't start with espionage. I started with an assassination attempt, followed by... Odessa, which was the exposure of a German mass murderer, followed by mercenaries in Africa. I didn't actually get to espionage until novels five or six, so I was a late cover, very much so. But and it was, I say, it was very, very germane and very contemporary. How much of your experience and what you saw went into those novels uh, that you wrote about spying? Well, quite a lot, quite a lot. I had contacts in, in that world. Whom, to whom I could go for advice and guidance, and sometimes I would. I'd ask for a meeting, uh, never at um, either a Century House, which was the house before Vauxhall Cross, never there, um, but usually in a, in a, a restaurant somewhere. Um, and I would say, look, I have in mind to write this, this and this. Uh, what do you think? And somebody he would say, mm, not yet. It's still, it's still covered. Other times you say, yeah, it's usable, you can use it. Um, I would sometimes invent, as I thought, uh, an incident in the, would go into the book um, and be rewarded by being told, well, actually something very similar actually happened, and you can use it. So it's great. So fact and fiction blurring. Fact and fiction blurring. And in that world, they can blur because strange, strange things happen. There's what um, James Jesus Angleton called a world of smoke and mirrors. mirrors. As a, an author of, of fiction, based on some ideas and some experiences you've had as a journalist at Reuters and uh, in East Germany, are you being deceitful in creating a sort of romantic idea of a spy? Not just you, but I mean other authors. Deceitful? Um, oh, that's a good one. I, I wouldn't go on. I don't know. One is trying to entertain, basically. I mean, that's the, the role of the storyteller. Uh, storytellers go back an awful long way. Uh, 
the, the, the oldest profession in the world is not prostitution. <laughs> Believe me, it's telling stories. And so one trying to tell us an interesting uh, story that the reader will be, I don't know, fascinated by. Um, if I thought I was possibly going to transcend something to do with the, the nation's, this country's security, then I would uh, ask for advice. But otherwise, no, I'm free to say what I want to. How would you describe the essential qualities of a good or bad spy? I mean, narcissism has to be one of them, I suppose. I'm not certain that there, because, because you know, if, if, if there was one single type, then one might say, well, there are rules to describe this type. I don't think there is one single type. They're, they're all different. Um, they don't have anything in common? Virtually not. You know, the capacity to deceive um, and a talent to deceive and a taste for deception are probably uh, common. Is the day of the spy, therefore, a little bit dated? Because what you're talking about now is um, uh, military intelligence, electronic intelligence, yeah. drones, a completely different world to the single it man is. going over the wall in a yeah. carry novel. I think that's probably true, that uh, of all the intelligence meeting information gathering going on, most of it now is hyper tech. It's either um, eavesdropping, um, or photographing either from space or from long range, or the drones, which are providing a huge quantity of information about particularly terrorism in the Middle East. They're constantly patrolling overhead, unseen, but all seeing, uh, and controlled by a pilot in, for God's sake, Creech. In <laughs> our, Nevada or something. Air Force Base Creech in Nevada. So if you're writing a novel in 2020, 2021, yeah about espionage, what would the focus be? Oh, I think it would have to be the, the, the computer. I mean, it would have to be, um, because... I can't see James Bond on a laptop. No, <laughs> no. I don't think anybody would go to bed with, it, go to bed with anybody either. <laughs> Nobody would go and see the film, wouldn't <laughs> no. But I mean, Bond, Bond was, was ludicrous in the sense of, you know, going and finding the chief um, sort of bad guy who's going to spectre who's going to destroy the world or something, and to be greeted by a good evening, Mr. Bond, we have been expecting you. I said, that's a secret mission? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lasted seven seconds. <laughs> no, that... that uh... <laughs> but you must have enjoyed the Bond films. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, great fun. But uh, nothing to do with espionage. Has the spy then had its day? He or no. she? No, I don't think so. It goes back to the Bible. You know, I mean, I mean Gideon and his Midian, the war against the Midianites, he started with a, you know, an expedition to uh, spy on them. So no, it will have to go on because, I mean, it is just simply vital for a powerful nation like ours um, to know in advance what is being plotted and planned against it. And that's counterintelligence. The only way to do that, or one of the two ways to do it, is to go and invade the, 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 the enemy's secret fortress and find out. Fact and fiction, yeah, coming together beautifully. Very close, yeah. Well, they, they, some some stuff was very close to, to fact, because let's face it, the facts best. I mean, if, that, if you can say, well, that really happened, um, it's even more convincing that I made it up. So there's the, the skill of the journalist and the writer coming together. Well, that's it. That's where the the, the journalism came in. I, looking back, I, I could never have been the writer of what I wrote without the years in journalism taught me a lot, and particularly um, research, which is what journalists are supposed to do, find out what's going on, what's really going on, go, go past the political lies and distortions and uh, sort of um, the, the cover-ups, try and get at the real truth. Um, and if you spend a, a career in journalism doing that, you can switch quite simply and say, well, I'm going to do it now, but I'm, when I get all this, I'm going to write a dispatch. But an extra long one, 350 pages dispatch. <laughs> but, but I'm going to just invent a bit. So I invented a bit. I mean, Jack, Day of the Jackal, yeah, it was, the goal was real. You know? That was the big hit. It was my first break. And I thought, well, if you're, why call the president of France in 1963 Dupont? Everyone knows it's Charles de Gaulle. And everyone knows the OAS tried to assassinate him. So... I used real characters in um, fictional conversations with fictional characters. 
So you couldn't tell whether this guy was true. You knew that guy was true. <laughs> he was real. But you didn't know whether perhaps the fellow he was talking to was real. You know, because he wasn't. He was invented. You make it sound straightforward, but it's more difficult than that. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. It's, it yes, it can be a bit torturous. Perhaps I have a, a weird mind. I don't know.